Ready? Yep. Oh, I can't wait. We're going to introduce the world to you, Jack Pazinski, on this vlog. I can't wait. First ever flight to Miami. Like the young brother I didn't want. <laughs> I like any kid who comes from anywhere to dig trenches. Look at this guy. His parents said it's cool for him to skip school to come to real school. Pond College. What can I say? Taking yeah. over. Oh, yeah, I remember this. This is like over here. Cat to the rescue! Ah! comes the kid. Let's see if he's smiling. <laughs> What'd you think about your first ever flight? It was okay. I mean, whenever I saw lights, I was fine. What do you mean whenever you saw lights? What does that mean? Like I could see the bottom. You, oh, you were worried when you couldn't? Yeah. Like what were you worried about? Like, I just couldn't see anything. <laughs> Oh, I'm so glad to see you guys. Oh, I'm so glad to be here. Yes, right? What's up, Huffy, man? man? I haven't seen you in a while. I'm stoked, yeah. man. Caterpillar showed up. So Caterpillar, you got all the products yeah, here? Yeah, products here. <laughs> What's up? Chris Hansen's back. Right. So glad to see the crew. Hi, guys. New faces. Nick. What's up, Caterpillar? Hootie, don't worry. I'm not driving any machines. Look. But today was insane. So, like, the good old Camp Cannon credit card got maxed out a little while ago. <laughs> so I'm calling. I'm putting out fires. Like, oh, God, what are we going to do? <laughs> Everything's oh. good. We just open a new line of credit. I'll be in debt for the rest of my life. You want to see? Yeah, I just want to see it. This is nuts. Come on, man. Because I haven't it's... seen anything yet. I'm so glad you guys are here. There's so much to go over. Look at that underneath rock. the line. I'm sorry, Kenan, but that's awesome. That rock? Yeah. That was from the front of my driveway. We've got, look at this one. Yeah. One there. Wow. Big one there. And we got another big one by the, the van. Uh, wow. Those will be the biggest stones. Oh my God, Kevin. Yeah, uh, it's overwhelming. No, there's brother. no amount of pictures or video that could tell you that it was going to look like this. No. The it's... liner bubbled up a little. Oh, uh, you think? That's probably three foot of water. <laughs> yep, definitely, the... definitely water. With every project we do, whether it's a one day project or a three week project, at some point it looks like a bomb has gone off and that's exactly the stage they're at now. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Look at this. Bog filter, well I know that's a bog filter. Pond with some problems. Again, I know that there's problems. You guys won't, I'll get into that in a second. This is a massive pond. It's gotta be a good 35 feet from here to here and it looks about 40 some feet from here, maybe 45 feet from there to there. Um, from my understanding, this bog filter is going to get attached somehow or another to this pond with some kind of stream system that comes in through here. Hey Chris, What's up, buddy? what are you working on? Well, we got the update from Kenan over the phone before we got down here and he was saying that there was a couple feet of water underneath the liner because it's been raining for I guess the last eight to ten days straight to really you know assess if there was any damage or anything like that we got to get all this water out from underneath the liner so what we're doing is we flip this liner back and just put our clean out pump in and start pumping this water down yeah, you can see see how it's all bubbled up down That's... in there the, the hydrostatic pressure let me show you how uh, pond builders tested it's a good thing you wore those flip-flops today huh yep definitely a lot of water Oh, I'm at the bottom. There's the bottom. That's good. That's so, solid. So, so we're about 18 inches. That's how you know exactly how much water. There's about two feet, 22 inches. Is it weird that you're not buoyant? <laughs> oh my gosh. It's deeper over that way, you think? Oh, it does feel good. Like you could not do this in Chicago right now. So this is why I'm jumping all over the opportunity. Oh my gosh. There's probably some kind of Florida snake in here though. Before we got here, they actually spent a great deal of time with a solution to this because right now you've got groundwater and the Florida groundwater is extremely high and this is actually where the water table sits in the whole property. So what they did prior to this is they put in a bunch of drains. The reason the drains aren't working right now is because there's no pressure, there's no water pressure on top to push the water down low and more importantly take it up through this pipe over here what happens as the water pressure is greater on top than it is underneath the water will take a path of least resistance which would be then through this pipe which will then get coiled out and discharged out that way which will totally alleviate that from ever happening again and uh, we should be all right do you concur Found guys, it's the Jack Pazinski. Is that how I say it? Yes. Right? 
What are you doing down here? Helping you guys with the rec pond. You took off a school to come out here? Yeah. And everybody was okay with it? Yep. And that's awesome. Jack has built some amazing ponds. And I say ponds because he's built two ponds in his own yard, correct? Yes. They're actually really awesome. This is super cool. You're, you're down here in Florida with us to just learn from the best. We've got Chris Hansen, myself, the whole Aquascape team. We're going to show you how we build ponds. This is the first time you've actually worked with the entire Aquascape yeah, team. It's be but before we do that, let's grab some breakfast. Okay, sounds right, good. Cool. Chris is bringing around the big machine. I can hear it coming around the garage over here. We gotta move all of these boulders to get in here, clean out this whole area. We're gonna actually probably deconstruct this whole wall and then come in here and we can start slinging rocks and dropping some of this stuff in place. We talked about getting all this groundwater out of the bottom. Groundwater is never gonna go away. Every day we'll have to pump water out until we get this rocked in and we can get some water in on top of this to keep that groundwater from pushing up the line. So right now we're just kind of cleaning up this bottom shelf, making it so we can actually stack boulders. What happened is over time, as the water kept going up and down, up and down, it eroded away this whole shelf. Stacking boulders on a wall that's like this is nearly impossible. Every time I put a rock, it's just gonna wanna do this. So we're just cleaning this up. We're gonna get it flat like all these other shelves and then uh, we'll start rocking this in. of important tools on a job site but a project like this is impossible without using a caterpillar excavator like we just love this thing it's actually it can make me a little nervous though because it's so stinking new i mean it has five hours on it i feel so guilty getting a little bit of dirt in here sorry caterpillar but we really appreciate your help on this one <laughs> to strap some rocks. This is probably an excellent teaching opportunity for Jack. Hey Jack attack! Have you ever strapped a boulder before? No. The most important thing obviously when strapping boulders is safety, right? So you want to make sure that when we're strapping this everything is secure. What we look for on, on rocks as we're strapping them is points that as uh, the bucket pulls up on that strap is going to hold tension and bring that strap in as close to that rock as possible and use that friction to help pull that rock up. So we're gonna use this strap right here, which is an endless loop strap. There's a lot of different ways to do it with different kinds of straps, but this is about the most basic and pretty easy. Every rock has kind of a center of gravity that you wanna look for or a point that you wanna pull from. Making this the top, I'm gonna take the top end of this loop and I'm gonna bring one end over the backside of that rock and the other end over. Now I'm gonna put this loop because I'm gonna bring the strap back over up and through here like this, okay? So I'm gonna see how I have this strap going this way and this strap going that way. Yeah. I'm gonna use these two corners to secure it, to, secure it to, to bring that strap underneath here, over the front of this rock and back under. I'm gonna bring the other part of this loop up over the front of this rock. You wanna make sure you have all the slack out of it, right? Correct, and that'll happen as that bucket starts pulling up. It'll start pulling all that slack out. So I've got these two parts of the strap coming back over. I'm gonna bring it underneath the corner of this rock here and underneath the corner of this rock here. See how that came Hold through on. and up Hold under? Corners. Now when he pulls up with the machine on this strap, it's gonna put tension on this, start tightening it up, and the friction of this strap is gonna hold that strap in place on this rock. When you're putting the strap on the teeth of the bucket, and there's a lot, again, a lot of different ways to do that. We're gonna, just gonna go over the teeth. You don't wanna bring it back over like this, because what can happen is that's relatively sharp. You can shear a strap that way. So we're just okay. gonna go right over the top of the teeth right here, or you can go over the top of this tooth and end up on that tooth. See how he's putting tension on that right there? Yep. And then when he pulls up, yeah, it's nice and flat. That was that center point that we talked about. All right, you ready to place it? Yep. Go get him, Tiger. So Jack, 
We've got a problem. What I actually like about building ponds, it keeps you endlessly creative. I've been doing this for a long time and I still don't have it all figured out. So we're still learning, learning, learning. The problem that we have to overcome right now is there's a rock out front that is so big, it broke a strap last time we were out here. It is approximately six and a half feet that way, five feet that way, and three feet tall. It's a massive, massive stone. If this machine can pick it up, then we can set it with both of those. If that machine can't pick it up, it's gonna live someplace over here. <laughs> or back in your driveway. We're gonna see if we can't pick that thing up. It is calling to go right where that hose is sitting. That big rock will make such a statement, and this is the main viewing area, and that's the best rock. So I would love, love, love to put it sitting right over there. It'll fit perfect. The only way we're gonna move it is to use that machine and that machine try to set it at the same time. You get in the big machine, I'll get in the little one. Break. I'll just slap my hand. Go like this. One, two, two three. three. You don't just... So <laughs> much to learn. So much to learn. We have the biggest rock on the project going in shortly. Well, when I say shortly, it's probably going to take a good amount of time. This is uh, one of the sketchier things we've done. We paired up the machines. You gotta see this right now, actually, because it's happening. We just had that massive bowler. I mean, look how big it is. It took two machines to set that. We had a skid steer head, had to come in and move it. I mean, it was close, guys. We got it in there. Guys, this is amazing. Who would have thought that building my own pond would turn into something on being this big of a project? This is crazy. I got a call from Greg. I'm here in Florida. It was negative 50 in Chicago last week. 60 degrees and I'm in shorts. I can't thank Greg enough for everything. I'm working with the best of the best in the world. I couldn't ask for anything better. We gotta get back to work, guys. See you later. So one of the first things I said that we needed to get done was uh, get this uh, rainwater system in. Uh, this is a 2,000 gallon reservoir. It's going to hold our pumps. We have our pumps located over here. We have suction lines coming in. Uh, our electric has been run. We got in some of these beautiful stumps and everything. We got some of this great cap rock as well. And then we finally have that elevation set. This big old giant slab of quartzite right here is going to get set right at top of that. And that's going to create that skimming action flowing from the pond itself down into this reservoir. From here, once the water goes through those pumps, it's gonna get pumped all the way up on top to the wetland filter. Chris is trying to drop in a few last rocks over there before we head on out. Edges are done. We dropped in another incredible stump over here, this beautiful piece of cypress, changed out a couple perimeter rocks. The guys over here uh, installed that really cool elliptical deck. It's gonna create that dock-like feeling as you're looking from inside the house going out. Deck is right here, you'll be able to sit on that deck Hang your feet in the water, kick back and relax. You're looking across, we got some big old giant rocks over in here. Uh, the thought process is on this side, coming in with some of those coconut palms. He's got a big uh, area of them on the other side of his property. We're gonna dig some of those out, drop them in over on this back edge. It'll create a really neat effect. John over here is working on that, uh, that little land bridge. Pond is filling up. We pulled apart a couple edges to get some of these big rocks in place. And now Chris is fine tuning a little bit of the excavation. Wetland is full of gravel. We're gonna drop in an urn on top. All of that rock work has been done. Elevations changed. Uh, a lot of logistical challenges, but goes with any project. Let's check it all out.
It's crunch time now. I am actually getting ready to head on out of here. I'm going to South America to check out La Primavera Urbana. Wait for that. That video is going to be coming out soon. But I have to focus right now hard. We have guys broken up and girls everywhere trying to get things done. We have edging happening, bringing up the rest of the elevation in the wetland, getting ready to put in a, a stack slate urn. The deck is being finished, hooking up the brand new power heads, which are going to create that big push of water along the bottom, hooking up all of our lighting. The negative edge stone is in place. They're uh, tweaking that out. We're trying to finish that waterfall. We're cleaning gravel up. We have a ton of stuff. It looks like a bomb went off over here. We're moving soil. We have to change elevations. We have to grade everything. We got plants coming in. I don't even know where to start, <laughs> but we got to get this done because I got to go. I cannot believe what you guys have done and the generosity you all have shown me. What you guys have given me is a dream come true, man. I'm a little choked up. I gotta thank Colleen. Yes, you know, the president she was, of the company. The president of the company was planting plants, albeit she was planting them in the walkway, but we love you, Colleen. <laughs> you know I love this guy. I love to pick his brain. Um, and thank you. Thank you for your hard work, really. He My came pleasure. down a couple weeks ago, he came back and charged it. Chris Hansen, Brian. The Team Aquascape. Team people. Aquascape. <laughs> Pond's done right, customers served right or even better than right, okay? Yep. These, are our, these are our certified Aquascape contractors that came from near and far, all over the country. All over, far Donated away. Donated their time for this. Hank came all the way from Utah. Where's <laughs> Hank? I'm kidding, that's Mark, that's Mark. I'm only kidding. John Adams, Charlie Ross, all you guys. So many people whose names are escaping me. I love you all, really. The water is about ready to start flowing, right? Woo! You know, it's, it's, it's already starting to flow. So this is a $150,000 recreation pond. I'm just a poor little white boy from Long Island, man. This is unbelievable. 28,000 gallons and right around 150. 50 tons 150 of tons of rock not including gravel if we throw in all of the river rock and everything we're 230 240 tons almost a half a million pounds of stone you've <laughs> moved heaven and earth for me man this is a complete aquascape ecosystem recreation pond which will be much more healthy for you to swim with your animals Absolutely. and we want to inspire more people to live the aquascape lifestyles who wants a swimming pool when you can have a natural <laughs> recreation pond that looks like this? This is gonna be a place where birds gather. We're gonna get native frogs in here. We're gonna have our cichlids. We're gonna live amongst the animals. We believe in reestablishing nature where you live yes. in your house and there's no better way to do it than an ecosystem bond. Yeah, Absolutely, brother. thank you, Greg. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, that's it, yeah. Hey, Paul. Hey, Tavaro. Let's get in that pond, baby. <laughs> Stuff, like, comment, and subscribe because we want to inspire more people to build ponds done right, customers serve right. I love my job. Ooh.